for my last one. Mm -hmm. Let me unmute. Again. All over again. <laughs> Let me unmute. I keep quiet. I... Nice work, Mr. Gilmore. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. Yep. Oh, that's all right. Yep. 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 <coughs> okay, we'll get started. You called to order. Rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
You be seated. Mr. Clare? Here. Dr. Frick? Here. Mr. Linder? Here. Mr. Yosway? Here. Mr. McGann? Here. Mr. Nee? Here. Mrs. Ritter? Here. Mr. Bushy? Here. Mrs. Wayne? Here. All members present. Thank you, Mr. Howard. An executive session was held today on March 22nd prior to this meeting to discuss personnel and matters. Due to the state issued large, large gathering limitation restrictions, tonight's board meeting will be held virtually via Zoom for visitors with public comments to remain consistent with board policy 006. Visitor comments that have been received via email will be read during the visitor's comment section of the meeting. We have a motion to approve the agenda for tonight's meeting. Moved. Second. 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 All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Uh, recognition and presentation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Osway. Yeah, tonight uh, we are continuing with uh, recognizing our learners of the month. Uh, again, unfortunately, uh, due to size uh, restrictions, we're not able to have them here in person, but uh, all the same, we are able to recognize uh, kind of our best and brightest for this month. Uh, so without further delay, uh, I would like to recognize our uh, Marion Elementary Learner of the Month, and to present that, it's going to be Miss Miller. Are you there, Miss Miller? Yep, I see Miss Miller. Uh, yes, hello. Um, I would like to introduce Michaela Henson. Uh, she is the learner of the month for March. She's a young lady who's hardworking, kind, and helpful. While this is true of many fourth grade students, Michaela is one of those students who sets the example for others. And she did this even though she is new to Barron. When I asked Michaela what she would like people to know about her, she told me that her favorite book is Bliss Bakery about a magical baker. In fact, Michaela thinks she might like to be a baker when she's older. She likes to cook and she can make cupcakes by herself. Michaela also likes to do gymnastics, but since she's new to the area, having moved here from Georgia, her parents and her are still looking for a gymnastics program that she can join. In school, Michaela is part of the Math 24 Club with Mr. Fair, as well as the Garden Club with Ms. Coonan. Michaela's teachers were full of praise when her name was suggested for Learner of the Month. Mrs. Brackville, Michaela's string teacher, stated she is a very conscientious by a viola student and practices diligently. She asks intelligent questions and makes excellent contributions to class discussions and music. Mrs. Rule, Barron Librarian, said she is a hard worker and a very pleasant student. In her own classroom, Michaela quietly and capably shows the qualities of a learner of the month. She can be counted on to share her time and abilities with anyone in her class. Michaela finishes the work to the best of her ability and often goes above and beyond. In addition, Michaela is always willing to help, whether it be with something as simple as helping me out by placing papers in mailboxes, or helping organize science supplies. She can be counted on to use her problem solving skills when faced with a project or assignment. While this year can be stressful and full of cha uh, changes from day to day, Michaela does an excellent job of adapting to those changes. When circumstances require the class or part of the class to learn virtually, I can always trust Michaela to be responsible and excited about the learning we would be doing, either from home or at school. Michaela Henson is a welcome addition to the Manheim, to Manheim Central and well-deserving of Barron's Learner of the Month. Congratulations, Michaela. Congratulations, Michaela. Here to present our Learner of the Month from Doe Run, Do Run Elementary, excuse me, Stillwagon. I see Ms. Stillwagon there. Good evening. Um, 
Can you hear me? We can hear you. All right, good. Um, so yes, Noah is our learner of the month for um, fourth grade at Doe Run. Uh, upon receiving several class changes, um, and I had returned from a quarantine, I received an email from Carol Gleason stating, sorry is the subject line. Um, after getting to know Noah, I would certainly return uh, Carol's email with a, nothing but a thank you. Um, Noah has made his way from uh, Maryland to us uh, in Mannheim, and he had started his year with online learning um, since last spring. So he, he not only came to a completely new state, but also um, this was his first step back into the classroom. Um, so not only him joining out of state during these crazy times, he also came on the very first day that I left for another quarantine. Um, he joined our classroom seamlessly, though, and he has even received his own math group that's coined uh, Team Noah, given by his classmates. He's full of surprises in math and is well-rounded in all other subject areas as well. He is an artist um, and he, his writing abilities are impressive. He likes to surprise me uh, until he's finished with a, a final product in his writing. Um, and it's always full of pleasant surprises. He is uh, well-rounded in um, all other subject areas as well. He's a role model. Um, he takes initiative to help others without me even asking, uh, especially when it comes to math concepts or something that he has um, great experience in. And he also adds great value to our class discussions. He exemplifies the barren values that we um, hope to instill in every student. Though the time that I get to have um, you as a student is far too short, I am grateful to be a part of your education journey and I look forward to watching you grow. Congratulations, Noah. All right, to present our Learner of the Month from Manheim Central Middle School, we have Mr. Sigletis and Ms. Wagner. Good evening. It's our pleasure to present uh, Joey Z Johnston as the uh, Learner of the Month from the Middle School. Zoe is the type of learner that gets other learners excited about learning and reminds facilitators why we love learning. I first met Zoe when I joined the Manheim Central team in 2018 and got to work with her in the 5-6 band program. She was one of the learners that made the biggest impression on me because of her dedication, not only to her instrument, but to our band community. Within weeks of meeting her, I had nominated her to attend a PMEA District 7 Youth Honors Band Festival. Zoe is not just a, a dedicated musician, but a truly dedicated learner. Mr. Eng shares that Zoe shined in history class for several reasons. She has outstanding enthusiasm for the subject and eagerly participates in class activities and discussions. Her ability to make connections across time and space in class not only exemplifies a deeper understanding of history, but shows her true appreciation for the subject. She strives to do her best on every assignment and her work is best seen in her writing where her clarity and focus reflect her maturity and thoughtfulness as a learner. Mrs. Salaski shares that Zoe is a kind, diligent and responsible young lady and echoes Mr. Eng's praise for her work ethic. She is an independent worker and a leader in the Flex classroom. Throughout a year full of changes and challenges, Zoe has been a bright point of consistency in the music wing. Her optimism and her positivity are contagious and they really set the tone for our ensemble rehearsals and strengthen the morale of her fellow musicians and her directors amidst uh, all the challenges of this year, learning to play with masks and, and bell covers, being socially distanced, trying to play outside in the wind, she's weathered it all with a smile. Her hard earned skills and enthusiasm set her apart as a natural leader, but she also steps up to leadership opportunities voluntarily, such as taking on a section leader role in 7-8 band, assisting with repertoire selection for jazz band, and volunteering with our younger musicians in the fifth and sixth grade band. Zoe exhibits a growth mindset and is not afraid to fail forward. She is willing to risk making mistakes on her way to becoming a better player, so she is continually growing. When we looked back on her musical career, we realized Zoe has worked with a different director every single year since she began playing her instrument. 
In light of this, it's pretty clear that her unwavering positivity and her constant musical growth over the years is really more of a testament to her own dedication and resiliency than to any outward circumstances. We are privileged to have the chance to teach someone who teaches us so much herself. Zoe, thank you for all you are and all you do. It's not an exaggeration to say band would not be the same without you. Congratulations on this well-deserved award. Job, Zoe, love the growth mindset. Uh, and finally, from uh, Mannheim Central High School to present our March Learner of the Month. First, we'll go with you, Mr. Weitzel, uh, and then we'll shift to Mrs. L. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's the high school's uh, pleasure to congratulate Ian High as a CTC Learner of the Month. CTC still uses Student of the Month, so we'll, we'll use those uh, terms interchangeably. Just to introduce you to Ian, Ian is a member of the Electrical Construction Technology Program at the Brownstown CTC campus. His post secondary plans are to work full time in industry and continue learning and growing in the electrical field. What he enjoys most about the CTC is the learning style, getting experiences, and preparing himself for life. His instructor shared the following comment Ian is a great student who is currently at the top of his class. Ian is always willing to help other students and will assist with whatever needs to be done in the shop. He's a genuinely happy and pleasant person. This trait will make him a great coworker. He has secured a cooperative education placement at CM High. His employer evaluations included above average rating in all categories. We just want to congratulate Ian as a CTC and Mannheim Central Learner of the Month. Congratulations, Ian. Thank you, and also from Mannheim Central High School, Ms. Zell. It's my pleasure to present and congratulate Eleanor Ellie McClure as Learner of the Month. Ellie is the daughter of Mark and Frances Ann McClure. She's in ninth grade and has been educated using the home hybrid and online learning models this school year. She is an honorable student who has impressed her learning facilitators. Mr. Meyer shared that the hybrid learning model has provided its own set of challenges for learners. Ellie is an exemplar of a learner who is actively taking responsibility for her learning and using the resources available to her to comprehend the concepts of physical science. She pays close attention to her work and readily asks questions when she does not comprehend the material. Mr. Meyer wanted me to say on his behalf, I commend Ellie on her efforts and wish her all the best as she navigates through the high school experience. Mr. Miller agrees. He said, I am glad to hear that Ellie is receiving some recognition for her hard work. Ellie was awesome to have in Algebra 1 Part 1. As a hybrid student, she was able to effectively communicate with staff about any misconceptions she may have had during a lesson. She attended office hours, had a high completion rate for classwork, and had satisfactory assessment scores. She did this despite some of the challenges that home hybrid can present. I praise Ellie for her perseverance, and I know it will take her far in her high school career. Mr. Esch describes Ellie as a mature and thoughtful self-advocate for the third-party career planning online class. She has solicited feedback and taken measures to adjust her submissions accordingly. She is always on top of her work and is willing to redo or retake assignments and tests in order to maximize her achievement in the class. In addition to her academic achievements, Ellie plays clarinet and concert band. She had a company role in Robin Hood and this spring can be found singing and dancing as a bank worker in the musical Mary Poppins. Ellie is very deserving of this special recognition. I am certain she will continue to achieve great things throughout her school career. Thank you for allowing me to present her to you this evening. Nice job, Ellie, and nice job to all our learners of the month and our presenters. Thank you, and uh, hope you enjoy your night. Go. Thank you. I have a motion to approve the February 22nd school board minutes. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. At this point, we'll hear any public letters or comments. There are none. Okay, then we'll move on to the superintendent's report. Okay, thank you, Mr. Yogway. So tonight to kick off our superintendent's report, we have our student school board representatives, 
Cassie and Dana are uh, two usual mainstays. Uh, and we also have uh, an underclassman, uh, Sarah, with us. Dana and Cassie, is there any truth that you recruited an underclassman that I would struggle with her last name as well? <laughs> the floor is yours. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, as Dr. Aiken said, my name is Cassie Forey. I am privileged to be with you all again tonight. Um, I wanted to start out by talking a little bit about senior class activities. The end of the year is approaching, and so graduation is getting closer too, and that's meant that we've started having more discussions about how the end of the senior's year is going to look. I'm a senior this year, so this information applies pretty directly to me. Um, so some of these activities were just confirmed recently in a meeting held last Wednesday. Um, instead of a prom this year, we will be having a senior class celebration at Clipper Magazine Stadium. This will be on Sunday, May 2nd, and will be similar to post-prom, except that it'll be outside in a baseball stadium. So there will be similar activities like yard games, um, food, there will be a DJ and sort of like a casino night concept and more activities. So safety measures are still required even though it's outside and in a big space. And there's still some details that are to be determined just with the ever fluctuating nature of COVID. It's hard to come up with firm plans for about anything right now, but we have some plans now and it's exciting to be able to have those and have something to look forward to for the end of the year. In order to get to this goal though, we are having a barbecue chicken fundraiser um, where the orders are due on March 24th and each ticket includes the details as to the date and time of the chicken barbecue. So that is another fundraiser we're doing. Something else we're also doing right now is this week people can attend or not attend, like go to different restaurants like Tropical Smoothie or Sun's Ice Cream Parlor tomorrow night and get food and using a flyer, those, some of those proceeds can go to the Mannheim Central Senior Class to help fund the prom-like activity this year. So. I think that's a really creative idea and something that's really easy for people to do right now on their own with COVID. Um, so I'm thankful for the people that have been able to organize these activities and make it so that we can still have fundraisers despite this crazy year. Another thing that seniors have is an optional senior quarantine starting on Monday, May 24th. This ensures that seniors can come to graduation so they don't have to um, have the risk of close contact in school. And zooming in is still expected, work completion is still expected, but this way seniors don't have the risk of having to potentially be quarantined for their graduation. There will still be a baccalaureate ceremony, which the details are being worked out between students and the staff at Mannheim BIC. And then June 4th is graduation, but the details are still to be determined. Something else that pertains to seniors and also that pertained to juniors this past week was a scholarship push week organized by Mr. Groff. Seniors and juniors were encouraged to submit scholarship applications last week, March 15th through March 19th, and students who submitted one scholarship got a milkshake or sundae from Twin Kiss, three they got a chicken tender or slider platter from Twin Kiss, and four or more they got a milkshake or sundae for each one they submitted. So this was to try to encourage students to be more active in the scholarship process and submit more stuff. Um, and I appreciate, and I know others have appreciated Mr. Groff and his willingness to create events like this to get people excited about the college process as it can be overwhelming. Something else happening this month is na it's National Reading Month. So the librarians at our school, Ms. Carrero and um, the helper, her helper, have been organizing this. And each day the BNN crew reads a reading fact of the day. So a fact about a book or about reading in general. There's also something on Schoology where people have been trying to guess book titles through emojis, um, and then they get their names entered in a raffle to be drawn at the end of the month. Um, so again, I'm appreciative to them as well, being creative and trying to get kids excited about reading. So now I'm going to hand it over to Sarah, who's going to talk about our sports. Good evening, my name is Sarah Shigoyan and I'm in ninth grade, and I'm here to talk about our sports. Our winter sports included girls basketball, boys basketball, rifle, wrestling, boys swimming, girls swimming, and bowling. The girls basketball overall record was 11 wins to seven losses, and their league record was four wins to four losses. They also went to the district playoffs in the first round. 
The boys basketball had an overall record of 13 wins to six losses. Their league record was four wins to four losses. They also went to district playoffs and won to the second round. Rifle overall had a record of nine wins to seven to three losses. Their league record was seven wins to two losses. Wrestling had a record of six wins to eight losses and their league record was three wins to four losses. The boys swimming had a record of zero wins to six losses and their league record was the same. Girls swimming had a record of two wins and four losses and their league record was the same. Bowling had a record of 28 wins to 70 losses. Their league record was 24 wins to 25 losses. The spring sports include softball, baseball, boys volleyball, boys tennis, and track. Softball will begin their season on Wednesday with a game against LA, LS at home. Baseball had a scrimmage today that started at four against Governor Mifflin High School. Their next game will be Wednesday against York Suburban at York Suburban. Their bo the boys volleyball had a scrimmage against Hemfield and tomorrow at four. Boys tennis has a current record of one win and zero losses. They had a match tonight that started at four against Lancaster Mennonite. Their next match will be tomorrow against Warwick High School at four and it's at home. The track will have a meet against Elizabethtown on March 29th and it's at home. Some general information is the SAT and PSAT testing day is going to happen on March 24th. Testing will begin at 7.30 a.m. and is taking place in up the upstairs wrestling room. A course selection meeting will be held on Tuesday, March 30th during an extended block one. This meeting is for the students in grades 9 through 11 and is led by the school counselors. Hi everyone, I'm Dana Verhoesden and I'm a senior at the high school. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the different club activities. Um, so Interact Club, they recently did the Share the Love food drive and all the food that they, was donated was given to the Mannheim Food Pantry. They also did a fun raffle where each um, student that brought in um, an item to donate, they would get a raffle ticket and then they were entered to get a $25 um, Mill 72 brick house, or brick house gift card and also stuffed cookies. Um, and then student council, they just finished the Yeti and Hydro Peak sale for Minithon and they sold close to 500 um, water bottles and tumblers. They also did a Chick-fil-A fund, lunch fundraiser for Minithon on March 12th. And students had the option to pick a Chick-fil-A sandwich or an eight piece chicken um, nuggets. And they had an uh, option to add a medium fry onto it. They also continued to do different activities in the lunchroom on Thursday. Last Thursday, they continued to show the movies of Up and Zootopia. The video yearbook continues to edit footage from sports and different events that have happened in the year to get them to the MCHS video yearbook page. Avidum, they're hosting a one hour virtual free Avidum rally on April 8th and 10th. And this gives the Avidum students just a chance to connect with, one each, um, with each other. The Gay Street Alliance Club had their first meeting on Wednesday, March 17th. The National Art Honor Society plans to meet this Wednesday. And during this, me this meeting, they are going to hide clay eggs that are filled with candy. And this gives um, students an opportunity to look for them before and after school. Spanish Club had a meeting on March 10th where they learned about the flags of different Spanish speaking countries. The TGIF um, Bible Club continues to meet every Friday in the morning at the Farm Show Building. Ping Pong Club meets every Thursday after school to play ping pong and chess. And Baron Stage is, is working and rehearsing on the spring musical that's going to be Mary Poppins this year. Does anybody have any questions for us? I want to thank you, Sarah, Dana, and Cassie. Appreciate you updating us on these things.
Very exciting. Thank you. Thank you all, and I uh, hope you have a great night. Get your homework done. Hey, so long. Okay, uh, shifting gears. So we have been moving to all things high school renovation. Uh, we've been spending a lot of time with Jeff and Sean. Uh, and as you know, as I shared my update this past Friday, uh, it did go out to bid. Um, and so we had a pre-bid meeting last week. Uh, and so at this time, Jeff, I'm going to ask you to come forward here and I will give you uh, the hot seat. Hello, everybody. Thank you. Hey, I'm sorry, just get my bearings here. Okay, um, we're going to give an update. Uh, we have presented to facilities last month. Um, this is some of this is um, uh, updates to components at that meeting, and then we have some additional information this evening as well. Um, and we're so one of the things we're going to that's new is we're going to be starting off tonight with building fly through. Um, you've been seeing, let's get used to the pace of the uh, computer switching over. Um, through a lot of the project, we sort of talked about, you know, the, the, the nitty gritty of the floor plan, but um, we've been translating that both into three dimensionally uh, for the project. It just starts off the speed of this. Um, but we had met with uh, administration as well as staff at our office and uh, looked through finishes for the entire project and really walked. Uh, what this does is it's walking through all the major components of the project uh, from entering the building, the main lobby, um, going back through the gym and cafeteria. So it gives a strong feel of that floor plan that everybody's been looking at. How does that really translate to uh, the final product? So we're, we're now starting to walk down uh, to the cafeteria and gymnasium. We're walking by the library. There's some breakout uh, counseling rooms off to the right. Um, you see the, the main corridor with class into uh, the library and the visibility through, actually through the library for the exterior. So even though we're in the core of the building, you get the use out to the building. We're now coming through the, the current 2000 corridor. There's going to, off to your right, there's a um, student cafe that location um, and then off to the left we're going to be transferring into uh, the gymnasium and also you have large group instruction off to the right at this location Brian this might be something with uh, you know talked about potentially uh, loading this up to the district website for people to look at uh, maybe we can work out the pace the file size is quite large uh, we're, we've now stepped into the main gymnasium. And the idea is having all these primary core spaces on that main street uh, so that you can uh, have them in close proximity to each other. You have the ability to break out in the hallway and have enough circulation, which you don't have in the building right now. You know, essentially, you go into narrow quarters if you're at the gymnasium or other, other components, the library in the building. Uh, so you'll have the, the gymnasium close proximity to the cafeteria. This will also be the new rear entrance. Um, through that glass is the uh, memorial that we talked about last month. Um, now we're starting to come back and uh, going by the Hall of Fame. And then as you turn left, this location will be going to 3000 quarter. And what you also see to the right there is continually throughout the building, we're having these breakout spaces for the students. It helps also uh, not only widen the hallways, but it gives locations that students can either do individual um, breakout uh, study or uh, have, have got gatherings uh, before or after school or, or throughout the day. Uh, standard classroom layout. Now we're, we're moving down the existing quarter system. We do have lockers in the building, but Again, we've talked, I think we've talked about this in the past. We only have about 40% of the lockers that are in the building currently. Uh, Mr. Whitesoy and uh, everybody had a lot of discussions of really how many lockers are required in the building. 
now we're, we're stepping back into the classroom wing. Um, and this is one of the open collaborative pods that we've talked uh, a number of times. So we'll have a tech bar off to the right, large uh, open collaborative area, a small group, group instruction, and then also an, a secondary seating area for the students. And again, this sort of opens up these intersections, but also gives locations that students uh, can interact, take breaks. In hallways. Um, some of your, uh, your IT and uh, support. Another one of the learning pods. And again, these are sort of situated throughout the building that they um, sort of become the hubs of each uh, classroom area in the building. Something else we, we did a lot um, throughout the fly through um, and discussions that we had with, with everybody involved was while we want to incorporate the school colors, we didn't want it to be overpowering. We didn't want everything to be maroon and gray. Um, and so what we've done is um, like you'll see some of the maroon in the floor in that, that example um, in the main lobby, in uh, the library, in the entrance lobby, um, instead of having just the, just the school colors, the maroon as, a, as an example is up in the ceiling, all the structure is painted out maroon. So you always, you have that connection to it, but it's not, uh, you're allowed to bring other colors in as well. It's a little bit playful throughout the project. So, uh, I didn't yeah. see you didn't take us outside at all. Were we doing anything with that courtyard? Um, we, we do have seating areas in all the courtyards. And I'm sorry, the main purpose of this fly through was we were really working out all the colors with your staff at that day. So, um, when you see all the, the colors of the floors and the wall materials, we had a meeting where we would have the samples laid out and essentially they could interact with that material. And then we were making choices one way, one direction or another. Uh, to switch those out for final selections uh, for bidding for you. Uh, we didn't specifically talk about uh, so that has been a, a large focus. Um, you have the ability, there's actually uh, predominantly two entrances to each of the courtyards and we do have seating areas in each of those locations. So that'll be something that an opportunity. It looked like, did we lose uh, the student seating area in the gymnasium? Um, there's one in the back. I didn't see it. Um, no, we have the I, the existing gymnasium. Forgive me, this is Sean Dowdy from Crouchy. Oh, okay. Uh, the existing gymnasium, I think you're referring to, has uh, like on the broad sides, there's a two like swaths of seating, and then on the end, uh, I think is where you're talking about yeah. the student seating. Uh, now, the nature of the new gymnasium is so that we can most efficiently increase the uh, seating capacity in there. It, it's more almost square shaped as opposed to a long. Uh, so that allows us to build up the sides of, for uh, the purpose of being able, as an example, to fit the entire student body into the gym at one time. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, I misunderstood your question. Uh, you were talking about the, uh, the seating in the existing gymnasium yeah, sort of yeah. up, up at this location yeah. right here. Okay, I'm sorry. Thanks, Sean, for stepping in. Um, correct. Oh, okay. okay. That was new, one. Oh, geez. Yeah, we're really in the new gym. So yeah. if you if you compare the size of the two gyms, um, yep. a substantially increased amount of um, seating in that. You can just sort of see that by comparing the two of them. Um, but we are focusing it on the two sides yeah. um, with uh, a larger amount of seating for the home side. Okay. It looked like in all the breakout areas, you have monitors set up to be able to do presentations and stuff. Correct. Uh, essentially, each of those spaces are set up that they can be collaboration areas, but you can also bring a class, multiple classes into those locations for teaming. Uh, and, they, and they have the full capabilities of standard classroom, uh, whether it's IT, uh, attack boards, marker, uh, uh, marker boards uh, for those different opportunities. So really, you can go in any direction. Okay. Any, and that was uh, the video was a little choppy just with the uh, the file size. Um, but any other questions on that video? Skip through that. So an update on construction timeline. We had presented this to you last month. 
Uh, we're about halfway through the process. You can see some of the activities are carried out. Um, we have uh, begun bidding the project. We had our pre-bid with contractors walking through uh, the building last week. So we're, we're going to take about two weeks into the process at this, at this time period. Uh, we are still planning that tentatively at this point, bids are due April 14th. I will warn you that um, we probably are going to take advantage of the bid extension that we've talked about, talked to you in the past of about one week. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more. Uh, that actually has to be has to do with being strategic with the bids and uh, the time period for approval uh, by the school board uh, because of what's occurring in the, in the construction market right now. So I'll talk about that shortly. Uh, what we're trying to do is have a very short window from when the bids are open and then you as a board review and potentially approve them uh, because of what's occurring in the construction market right now. <coughs> Can someone digest them for us or summarize? Or we can see them all. Yes. Um, what, what's going to occur is uh, we'll open those bids. And actually, we were having a discussion uh, with administration today. We'll probably go into two or three intense days of meetings, um, <coughs> um, as well as looking at um, validating the viability of each of the parent low bidders. So, for instance, we'll have comments, uh, the bidders have two days that they can withdraw their bid if there's an error in it. Uh, at the same time, we'll be looking at their qualification statements uh, that they have to submit with their bids. Um, and we'll be a back and forth with that. And ultimately, we'll be turning documents also over to your solicitor um, when, you do, when you execute final contracts. And so there'll be uh, quite a bit of vetting that'll occur with those contracts before we bring them to you with, uh, as a school board. Uh, we will, uh, knock on wood, hopefully everything goes well, uh, we will bring um, a series of alternates as sort of an overall package to you as a school board. Uh, but again, ultimately, um, it will bring a recommendation, but typically the administration and the school board will, will discuss those and we may move some of the alternates back and forth depending on, on your decision. Um, we spoke a lot or a good amount last month about the construction market. Um, unfortunately, I have some news. It's not, uh, it's definitely not the best news to present uh, this evening, but I need to give you uh, some update to that. We had talked previously that historically there's about two and a half percent of inflation yearly occurring in the construction market. And what we were starting to see uh, pre January time period is that we were seeing steel was beginning to increased by double digit percentages. Um, since that time it, in, in February, it has gone up substantially. Um, this is probably the largest part of the discussion that I need to have with you this evening, is steel has now increased 60 to 90%. Uh, there's essentially a bubble occurring nationally in the market right now. Um, and this, whether it's structural steel, steel that goes in rebar, metal panels for siding materials, steel across the industry has, has uh, uh, risen substantially. Also having a large impact on the availability. So contractors are telling us that steel that is ordered today will not be delivered uh, till the new year, uh, which is normally it's about a two to three month window for stale steel availability. We're now talking about a nine month window. What's causing that is uh, internationally, there is a run on steel uh, in the construction market. Um, domestically in the U.S., um, while we were starting to see that increase uh, last month, what, what's now being validated is that uh, companies such as Amazon are effectively buying up all the stock of steel uh, nationally. They're contacting uh, steel manufacturers, steel mills, and buying all the stock in the near future uh, because of warehousing that's being built. What, what, are we all, what have we all been seeing last year with COVID? Um, essentially, industry is switching from a commercial market to going to stores to everything being shipped. So that's, that's changing the, the entire market condition. Um, contractors that we've spoken to, this is um, not something that's going to be permanent. You don't go through a 60 to 90% cost increase, and that's permanent, but we are going, unfortunately, through a bubble right now. Uh, we're hearing everything. I've, I've heard a lot of contractors talk about six to nine month time period. 
Uh, we've also heard a lot talking that this bubble will continue to the end of the year or possibly into the beginning of spring of 2022. Okay. So that's something that that is uh, very difficult. Unfortunately, this is sort of a um, there's no precedence within the construction market for this occurrence. Uh, so it's been a, a large part of the discussion we've been having with the administration. Okay. That's, a, that's affecting other uh, other construction materials. I think I said uh, at the facilities uh, meeting, it hit the residential market very heavily. Um, but until uh, this, while it had, has hit drywall, it's hit lumber. Those materials are smaller impact on, on commercial projects, specifically schools, where steel is roughly, typically it's about 17.5% of the materials for construction projects. So steel impact is pretty substantial. Uh, this was a, a slide that I had shown in, uh, previously, and we were seeing inflation, but this is before the, the, uh, the inflation that has occurred just in the last month. Not that it wasn't occurring before that, but the, it, it really finally validated itself with uh, construction companies. So um, what, what does that mean? Um, we have uh, provided some of the cost data and, and really these, uh, this is an overview of the, the, the total cost estimate. We're not gonna go through each of these components. Again, I showed this to you last month. We have not modified it substantially from last month, um, but the steel increase is more specifically something that we wanted to discuss with you. Okay. Overall, we're still roughly a, a 40, $45.5 million project. Um, we have incorporated some of the more tangibles, the mechanical, electrical increases uh, that we've spoken to the board. Um, you would also ask, and I'm gonna break these out in three different categories. Or some of the other components, there had been scope that had been required to be added to the project. For instance, uh, sanitary uh, that was discovered, sprinkler systems flow uh, to the building that required underground storage tanks. Um, that's what uh, we had identified in yellow. And we're gonna come back to that and actually um, break out those three categories uh, for you. But before we do that, I've spoken a number of times to you, uh, to both the administration and the board about alternates to the project. And we had had, uh, we hadn't been able to finalize the cost for them because some of them were still moving. We were still adjusting uh, and we were trying to increase the amount of alternates for you um, for to help with the current market conditions that, were, that are occurring. So this is a list of some of the, uh, the more prevalent cost items, uh, alternates for the project, and it roughly adds up to $4 million. That, that, that covers right around, I'm gonna say about eight or 10% of the project. So that's gonna give us a lot of control um, in one direction or other on, on bid day. And that's uh, part of what I mentioned earlier yeah. about how we were gonna bring that to the school board. Um, we will have an overall matrix spreadsheet uh, with potential options and um, for all these components, and then we'll color code that, and that'll allow us to have this discussion, uh, both this board, administration, and the design team can come in and allow you to make a final direction of what's in the project, what's not in the project. Okay. And then just that overall uh, cost. Yeah, covering uh, about just over forty-five and a half million dollars. Okay. So one of the requests that you had uh, when we met facilities last month was just uh, uh, the current cost estimate uh, in different categories. What's in mark? What has been due to market inflation? What has uh, been due to scope increase, uh, specifically due to code or unforeseen conditions? and then what has been owner requested scope. Uh, so that's what we're showing here. Roughly about $1.75 uh, million for the market inflation. Uh, the scope increase is 1.1, which has included everything from underground sanitary, uh, the underground fire protection, protection tank due to the flow coming to the site, uh, collection and the sprinkler pipe uh, replacement within the building. Uh, 
Um, and then there has been $340,000 worth of owner uh, requested scope. This specifically was the bathroom upgrades uh, throughout the building and then the who's in technical education. So total, again, um, you're looking at about seven and a half percent cost impact to the project. Uh, there is the potential, well, last month we were saying that please be prepared that there could be two to 5% uh, inflation beyond that. What is not accounted for, and, and we didn't want to just be adjusting the budgets on you further. Um, it's very hard to quantify what's occurring in the steel market right now uh, with effectively doubling that steel price, which could be 17.5% of the project. But be prepared that it could be discussion we've had with the administration is it could be beyond that point. Um, and we want to build off of cost estimating uh, standards that we have throughout the industry that have been tried and true. That's how we generated the current budget that we've seen. We've been, been able to make some adjustments modest for inflation, as well as some of the scope that we've been seeing. But we didn't want to adjust further on that steel because we're getting mixed signals from contractors. Um, here, here's an example. While we are being told that it's 60 to 90% impact, I've had other contractors say, well, they take some risk, which is part of, uh, of a general contract or a contractor's responsibility. Uh, do they make some predictions on where the cost of steel will go for instance, if, it, if it comes down? And does that potentially give them an advantage on a big thing? Uh, they will do that. Um, I've had other uh, bidders approach me and say, no, grant their butts. Steel is is a hundred percent increase from where it was last fall, and that's where our number would be. Um, so, which side will win out on bid day? We're, we're not sure. I think discussion <coughs> we're already halfway through bidding. Um, let's continue and let's see where we go, and we will have a discussion next month. Okay. No questions related to that. I sort of wanted to try to move efficiently through that and not spend too much time on each. Line, but. You said the steel is 17 and a half percent of the project. Typically, steel uh, is, is roughly uh, 17 and a half percent of the construction project, correct? For the materials, I'm sorry, side of it. So substantial. Is Claire Brothers bidding in any of the audio or? Uh, they were involved in some of the design. Um, we don't necessarily see that uh, during the bidding time period because we're just seeing the, the overall, for instance, the electrical contractors uh, bidding the project. We don't see all the subs that they're talking to. We would assume that they are speaking to them uh, since they, <coughs> excuse me, were intimately involved in the design. Uh, they would be the natural person for those contractors to be going to the cost. I would also note that Electrical and HVAC trades right now are the two. I think we have easily five, we have six electricians. Yeah, we just heard about a six electrician that's picked up drawings today. So there's going to be a lot of competition in that trade. Thank you. I like the way it presented and uh, showed where the increases were. EVC. Nothing else? That's enough uh, for this evening. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, I'll present from the back of the room, but I'm not going to go back up there. Uh, Mr. Dittmore is coming up here. Uh, he's going to talk just briefly about the, some updates. We're going to do the website. Uh, there's no action items tonight, uh, but he is going to look for um, uh, some approval for next month. So I said, hey, well, let's let's talk about this tonight, address this tonight and have any questions. But uh, again, just an effort to, to continue to uh, just keep our, our website really uh, as, as the face of the district, uh, as you all know and appreciate uh, in 2021, it really is the first exposure uh, many folks have to the district. So uh, Mr. Dimore, floor is yours. Thank you. Right. Oh, my bad, sorry. They record the meeting and then present. <laughs> so 
So like he was saying, the, the website is our, uh, it's how we engage uh, with our community, our learners, uh, and provide consistent communication across the district. Um, our district website is our most visible communication channel. Uh, we average about 70,000 views a month to our website. Um, and since the COVID-19 pandemic that has changed the way we communicate, um, and it's highlighted uh, several areas for improvement. Um, so to effectively, to effectively engage our learners, our families, we would like to uh, redesign our website and renew our notification system. So we would be saying, staying with the same hosting provider, and that's Blackboard, uh, who does our hosting. Uh, we currently have the Blackboard Community Engagement Suite. Um, that is hosted on uh, Amazon Web Services on their back end. Uh, so we would stick with that. We would negotiate a new three-year contract, um, and that would get us back in line with market, market conditions. Uh, and the three-year contract would include the redesign and notification tools. Um, one of the features of this is the mass communication system. And I think Dr. Flannery would get a, a kick out of this. Uh, it will allow you to create your content once and then publish to all of our, our different sites. So publish to our website, our mobile communication app, any social media sites, uh, text message voice, we'll be able to send it out one click, one message. Uh, currently, it takes several staff to go ahead and get that message out across the <laughs> uh, And then a previous question here is that NASA actually uses the same system to send out notifications for the rocket launches. The project timeline for this would be June, August. We would install the My Way Ultra template and do the mass notifications implementation for that. And then in uh, August, December, we would redevelop the, the website. That's where we would do the site navigation, the content that we have on there, the apps, all the features, all that stuff that we've done. And then in January 1st, hopefully, we would launch the new website. So beginning the, the June and August, you would see the brand new refresh, the look of the site, and then the, the how the site works behind the scenes that would be happening in August, August through December. So what's a mass notification? Like mass milk. notification is how we send out all of our. What would be the content? The milkshake line is low at the farm show. Or so it, 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 the content could be it could be uh, grades. It could be closures of building, any emergency notifications. It could be, uh, like you said, cafeteria, cafeteria related stuff. And, and mass would be everybody or do you cut and we, we, can, we can customize it to individuals or to, or, you know, if it really gives us the opportunity to send out that, that information however we want. And you'd have to scope it exactly how we want. You have that ready by next, that part of it would be ready for next school year. Yeah, the, the idea is to have that ready by the start of the school year. Have the new look and, the, <clears throat> and that, that piece ready for the start of school year. We can do pieces of that now, but it's very clunky and time consuming because we're in multiple systems. So I think this would just be a huge gain in efficiency for us. How do the parents receive it, a text or an email? They can choose, but they can receive voice, text, and voice is up into 62 different languages. Uh, text message, email, they can do the mobile app, get the notification on their phone through a mobile app. Uh, it will pop up on the district website, uh, Twitter, Facebook, whatever means they, they sort of choose to, to use. John, will that be on the site, like a section that each parent could go in and then pick for themselves and do that? Yeah, they, they, if, if they install the app, they have, they have the choice to do that. They can set their preferences, but if they don't have a preference, they will default both uh, text, voice, and uh, email. It's typically, typically what we do now, we do voice, voice and email, a phone call and an email. Is this tied in with our security plan? Like if there were an intruder situation, how fast would something go out? Yeah, we, we could use this definitely to try to get um, accurate 
communication out as quickly as possible. So the uh, I'm, I'm moving, redesigning our website and moving to the new notification system that will actually save the district money, which is something you don't hear too often. So if you look at Look the uh, total annual cost that column at the top under annual service costs. You'll see it's uh, around seven thousand dollars cheaper per year. The first year of implementation, there's going to be some upfront costs for development and implementation of the some of the new software and system. Uh, our total for um, year, our, our total for year, um, with our current contract. Versus the new contract will only save five thousand dollars. Last one, the cost by year. So the first year, you'll see under the new contract there's a higher cost of thirty-seven thousand dollars. And then after year two, we essentially break even, and then we end up saving five thousand dollars while redesigning our site and communication system. Good. Any questions? John, are you going to do most of the creation yourself of the website? Yeah, we are we're working with Blackboard to assist us with that. Well, and then we will be engaging staff. That's why it's going to be tough. It's going to, it's going to take a while to get everybody involved. Okay. You want to see an example of what the sites sure. what we look like? Uh, you want to click the first link there? I'm going to have to share that. I can send it to you. I'm trying to think what we get now, you know, the delays. Uh, yeah, it, it will look fairly similar. It'll just be up to you fresh contact. Have we actually thought through like how we tie it in with security? You know, legally, would we? Would we really do that, or would we just have a blanket thing? There's an event at the school, please be clear. We have a communication element to our current all hazards plan that we would implement. Have we ever practiced that? Not since I just I've wonder been, if we thought through it, if it's really something we could do, or if it yeah, it'd be part of like an all alert campus system, absolutely. This is this is the we, we have several templates to choose from, but this is one of the templates we could choose from. I know what it was. We had that situation this year where the school buses went out and had to get come back, you know, because of the flooded flooding on the roads or the snow on the roads. Remember that? From a couple of years ago. I thought it was this year. Uh, we delayed the buses leaving, but we didn't. None of them. Uh, Did we more. keep people, kids yeah, in the school here? Yeah. yeah. So would that be a use, or would that be too? Yeah. Would that be too low? That would be exactly one of yeah. the first abuses. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because that would help. I think. There's a lot of confusion. We, we, we can tie in transportation. It definitely <laughs> seems like you can get information out much faster. Yes. In that situation yeah. than we're doing now. Because now you're basically waiting for an email or a phone call. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So. And, and we have people have... doing Twitter, and we have people doing Facebook, yeah. and... And the text is the fastest. Yeah. And that's what businesses all are moving to. Text, text, text. Any other questions for Mr. Day? All right. Thank you, John. The final item on my report is uh, first reading of board policy there. Uh, so this time I'm going to kick it over to Dr. Flannery for Assistant Superintendent's report. Dr. Flannery. Sure, three things for you guys this evening. First is a school calendar update. Um, as you know, we lost four days to snow this year. Two um, are already determined how we're making them up. The December 17th closure was made up already, Friday, March 5th. The February 1st closure will be made up on Monday, April 5th. Those two things we know. But we were talking about what to do with the end of the school year um, and up for your um, up for your, I guess, vote this evening or information this evening for a future vote would be that we would keep the last day of school for students as Friday, June 4th. Um, in July, the board passed Act 80 days that we can use to um, accumulate total hours and minutes needed for students. 
So we would be enacting two of those Act 80 days um, for the students, but obviously the teacher contract still has the 190 days. So we would be keeping teachers on June 7th and um, June 8th for professional development. Um, so that's the school calendar update for this year. Any questions on that? Sounds good. Yeah. So, Director Hayden or Mr. Howitt, will that have to be a vote, or is that we just? Have not on that. That's that just, so there we go. Stuff. So we'll communicate that out. Then. Uh, the second thing is just two small changes um, in the in the plans that we've been going through. The first you'll see uh, that you saw as an attachment for the phase reentry plan, which is on our academic uh, piece. As you know, PDE. Um, changed the ranges for events. That's um, kind of indicated in the language we already have, but then also last time you talked about um, moving forward with going with the uh, closure ranges of six to eight or four to, so those that you'll see that language um, updated. Uh, in the athletic plan, you'll see um, the language about spectators. So as you've seen on April 4th now, for events, uh, indoor is 25% and outdoor is 50%. But there's an important word here in schools to remember, that's and social distancing. So this room is a perfect example. If we looked at this room being able to have 25% capacity, we'd have a lot more people that, than are in here right now. However, keeping the social distance, which is still current, currently at six feet for the state of Pennsylvania, um, we can't have more than 13 or so in this space. So that's a good example of the, the word and having to be considered. Um, so maximizing um, our spaces with the percentage capacity allowed, but making sure that social distancing is still achievable. We're talking about changing that to three feet. So the CD- Some talk of that. Yeah, so the CDC did um, put forth um, a regulation change there to say that social distancing uh, at three feet is an acceptable standard. There has not been movement on that to my knowledge yet from the PA Department of Health or PDE, and that's what we would need to see to follow suit. So at this point, we're still at six feet. Eventually, it should go in that direction. I would never want to predict what PDE or ATOH would do, but usually what we see is we from CDC first, and then down the road, we do see that trickle. That would be typical. Um, so... That's what you'll see on the, the items you're actually voting on this evening. The one item I wanted to circle back to that's not an action item for tonight, but that I wanted to discuss to know where you want to go with it is something that we've talked about in November, and that's with students and um, symptom screening. So um, looking at the data, um, I've reached out to our nursing staff to see about the temperatures outside, uh, taking the temperatures for students upon entry. We still have, um, for Barron, we've had zero students all year detected with a temperature. Doe run one, the middle school zero, and the high school zero. Um, some of the nurses went so far to say when they do get kids that are symptomatic, most of the time fever isn't even a symptom. We're seeing more of the loss of taste, loss of smell, coughing, sneezing. Um, so in an attempt to be able to be efficient, to pull back staff where they need to be in the morning, um, again, asking to be able to change the process to be able to have students checked at home. We would, however, like to keep some greeters in the morning because we want to make sure kids are sanitizing their hands and that they have masks. Because we are we are finding that at the um, onset of the day, catching that kiddo that might not have a mask and giving them one is something we still need to do. So we'd be keeping um, adults present uh, at the opening of the day for that purpose, but eliminating the temperature check and shifting that back a little bit. So that's, that would affect um, athletics. I would make that change in the athletic plan and also in the um, academic side uh, with your approval. Dr. Flannery, what, what burden or onus are we placing on staffing by doing this? So we have extra staff assigned and we have shifted hours to be able to accommodate it. What have we traded out to do that though? Can you ask me that? Is so it is it just a financial trade? Paying for overtime? No, we compensate like, this, so or do we example, just shift things? There's things that aren't getting done. Yes, right. So, like, there's people from from the district office that go to other buildings every morning. They're still working their regular hours, right. but they're out, you know, out and about for the first hour of the day. So, what's not getting done? Then? Um, I think the other job duties that they have are being impaired here. Maybe you could talk specifically. Like, what have we lost? So, we have three staff members. Uh, 
from the business office, one from HR, they're gone half hour to 45 minutes every morning. So um, it's, it's lost production, uh, could be overtime hours um, that we're having to pay on the back end there, um, make up for some of that lost time. Then in the paraprofessional end, we've had to take paras and like they're, they would normally start later and be with kids. And we don't, they're now coming in the morning to take temperatures. So we'd rather see them back working with students. To just speak from the building standpoint. Sure. I'll be honest. I mean, I don't know that we can answer. Did we make a difference or not? Right. We'll, we'll never know the, the answer to that. It's one of those chicken or the egg types of questions. If it's overtime, to me, it's part of surviving through all of this. You know, and do we make the investment? Do we make the right choice? I'll say yes, because we've gone through it fairly successfully. We managed to give our learners the choice to be in person or be hybrid or be full remote without catastrophic shutdowns of the buildings. So I'd, I'd argue it's been an intelligent choice. Apparently it's an opinion, right? That's the way they work, but I don't know that we've lost anything. If we're talking about overtime, small costs, I think, in the big scheme of things. Unless we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm not, we're not talking about it. Not, I haven't heard that. I haven't seen that in our budget reports, right? No, so no it's not. I'm not we're sure not I'm talking saying. about hundreds of thousands of dollars. We're, we're just, we're just, uh, we could use the production in the morning. Um, so yeah, everyone could, Brian, right? Like every business is stressed right now, whether it's going to Dick's Sporting Goods this weekend, I'm watching the guy counting people going into the building. Yeah, that's not what they want to do, but they're, they're doing their best to manage through things. I guess I would say, you know, at the, when we talked about this before, one of the questions you had kind of directed me was to look at the data. You know, how many kids are we catching? What are we seeing? And so, you know, coming here saying we've seen between a range of zero to one, getting those temperatures, you know, from, from the beginning of the year. I just would say, you know, is it the most effective thing? It, fever is in column B. So having a fever alone is not a reason to go home. We're not seeing fever being one of the things kids typically have, at least from the school nurse perspective, when they do become symptomatic and go on our chart, which is why I wanted to revisit it this time. And with everything with COVID, what we've seen is, you know, where we've started, some of the things we've had to ramp up and be like, ooh, that wasn't enough. And other things over time, we're like, okay, it looks like it's changing. And so I, I feel like I'm not doing my job unless I bring this to you and say, hey, this is something that I feel, you know, has been the data has been kind of continuing to go in a certain way. I think it's time we revisit it since we last talked about it. It was probably November. It was a while ago. So it would be my strong recommendation that we look at this to par like my biggest priority would actually be getting those paras back, you know, with, with your kids for a longer chunk in the day. Um, but it's, it's up to the board to see which way you want to go um, with that at this time. We have 45 ish days left in the year. It's over. Yeah, it's over. Do you know where we are with the vaccinations of folks who want to get vaccinated, the staff? Uh, I don't know from the staff. I know from the county perspective, we're now probably 38% uh, with at least one dose. But did, I can't did we have our this. vaccination day? We've we had we a couple. Been. Yes, and we're close now. The second wave is just about to happen. And once that second wave, that should capture uh, just about everybody that it would, if they choose to, that they yeah. would be able to, uh, to get the shot. You'll never know because of the privacy laws, right? You'll know that was offered and did people sign up? I didn't know if we had our jump J and J day. Rob, this is Linda Williams talking. Um, I agree with uh, Amy. I think the data really shows that temperature checks, we're talking one student in all of the temperature checks that we have taken over the year, I think is outstanding. I mean, it's amazing that that's all, all we had. Uh, I personally think that I would like these people going back into the classroom to help with kids right now. Um, I think that's just as important. Uh, my vote would be to go ahead and eliminate the temperature checks. I would, I would agree with Ms. Williams. I mean, I, I think, Doc, I think you guys are the professionals and I, I, leave the, I would agree with whatever y'all decide is what I would go with. You know, I was 100% uh, <clears throat> again eliminating 
taking the temperatures back when we did in November. Uh, through the data, not only that we're even here, but throughout, and the fact that they put the temperature in, in B, uh, I think it's time that, that we need to get arrows uh, back working with our kids rather than staying there taking their temperature. Who will help with the masks? Well, we have to figure that out. I haven't kind of gone that far down the road because I wanted to see what your kind of gut feeling was on this. I thought there's no reason in making plans until we knew which way the board wanted to go. So we're going to have to staff that for sure. I mean, if you think about the high school, we have more than one entrance they're coming in. So we're still going to need to have people there. I just, I can't speak enough into what that would look like because I wanted to start with this discussion. Yeah, I just feel better if it was, you know, like there's a difference between, hey, do you want a mask and it? You don't have a mask that's correct. You need to wear this. That's the function of the people that would be the greeters. If right. I didn't speak, to ensure that they have a proper mask on and also their hand sanitizing. That's what we found that to be very effective just in the beginning of the day to make sure it's a good way to start the day. So that would be that. That would be that those people's function. I just can't tell you how many that would be or who they would be at this time. We haven't gone down that road. They're doing an outstanding job, and uh, with the students, I I had to be at the high school uh, several weeks ago. I was totally amazed at how the kids, when they go in the front door, they they sanitize, they uh, they have their mask on when they come in the door, uh, they get the temperature taken, they they walk into one door of the office and use their phone to do whatever that thing is, and they're on their way. Uh, you know, I think it's getting important now that the kids themselves, even the elementary kids, know exactly what what they have to do and when they have to do it. And I think going back to just making sure they have the, the mask on, in my opinion, the temperature could be. Uh, what? Sorry, Mike. Sorry. Okay. Have you looked, I, I'll be honest, I haven't looked for the past week, but what is Lancaster County currently rated as in the three step system? We're still in the substantial range. So yeah. That's what I suspected, we're right? Almost out of it. The numbers, as I've been telling you, drastically have been going way down. Now, yeah. from the last week, well, you know, the week's always, the data is always a week old. The last report, that's the most effective way to say it. The last report, the numbers had sort of stabilized. They hadn't done a little bit like a percent lower, but it's not now. Like, remember, it was like going down, down, down. Yeah. It's kind of like at that stabilized line. That would show you sort of similar trends to what we've seen you know, yeah. in the nation as well. I mean, definitely, I'd be honest. I mean, if we were out of substantial down to moderate, I'd be a lot more comfortable saying, hey, let's start pulling back. Well, yeah, no, agreed. Those lines are somewhat arbitrary, but someone somewhere said these are important breakpoints. You know, people smarter than me in these areas, we haven't crossed the threshold from substantial down to moderate, let alone down to low. And that to me would be the trigger point if we wanted to talk about making changes. When the county shows that step, that to me would be a logical break point to start making changes. You know how close we are. Um, off the top of my head, I'm afraid to take a guess. I'd have to go back through my slide so I can see if I could find it here for you. Would that be a compromise, Linda? When we hear um, I think you should pull all the all the board members and you know you're not we're not going to change anybody's mind tonight. Really, you're either going to vote yes or no on it. Um, I think that's probably the best bet. Just you know, we've heard the. I wanted to give her some guidance, and uh, you know, I heard. Well, that's what I—that's what I mean. I think we should just go take a poll here and see how many are in favor of it, how many are against it, and then that would be the way she needs to go. I agree with you, Mrs. Williams. Because we could we could probably discuss this for another hour. And All right, and we're not going to change minds, really. Or I think people have their minds made. Uh, I, I agree we should, we should take a poll or whatever we need to do to, to give Dr. Flannery her. Okay. Um, so if I got one last question, Rob. Yeah. Remember when we had to do the attestation that we're doing? I forget all the things we had to do to say that we're going to be open and in person despite being in the, in the uh, substantial category. What did we say in that attestation letter? What did we commit back to the state that we were doing? No, nothing about temperature checks. Nothing about screening. Yeah, I don't remember what yeah, was. I, I remember I, I showed us. But... Be, 
one of few, or if the only one in Lancaster Levin is still every day. Universal mask order was one of the main. A big part of the attestation. So I guess there are three things on the table. Uh, uh, stop the temperature checks, go to the mass checks. Uh, don't stop the temperature checks or wait until we're down into a, uh, not a substantial, but what was the next one? Moderate, Moderate range, community-wide. And then stop the temperature checks and go to the mass uh, checks. Okay, so Dr. Frick, I'll start with you. Uh, I'm I'm in favor of uh, the moving to the moderate and then making a move, uh, but that's just my stance on it at this point. So, given what what's been uh, talked about, thank you, Linda. Uh, stop temperature checks. Keep masking. Mr. McGee. They stop this temperature. Stacy. Based on the data that Amy's collected and how we've only caught one person, right, with the temp fever, mm -hmm. what I'm seeing personally myself for people that have COVID that don't have a fever, right, the other symptoms are more prevalent. So I think it's more important that the kids have their mask on correctly and that they're practicing good hygiene and distancing as opposed to taking the temperature. So I'm okay with stopping temperature checks and having those paraeducators a little more as long as long as the masks are worn properly. That's yeah, they have to be properly worn. Okay. Thank you. I'm okay with canceling the temperature checks. Okay. Thank you. Stop. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Indeed, I'd prefer to see that the moderate change. Moderate. I would uh, echo Mr. Need. Mr. Claire. Uh, I think it's time that we could stop the uh, temperature. Okay, Mr. Linden. Based on Dr. Fine's recommendation and what was the data that she showed, I'd recommend uh, stopping the temperature. Different opinions, but I think you have the, the majority and some guidance. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm frantically typing here to try to find how close to the range we are. And I just, I can't find it with a, a level I feel that I want to say it out loud publicly. So I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Sure you yeah. you know. I got one. Sure yeah, we you know if we get to it next week. Thank you. I can tell you, and I can't recollect the numbers either, but if you read the stuff you're getting from PSBA every day, uh, a lot of this is in there from DSBA uh, doesn't necessarily hit like Lancaster County, but it goes in a general a general area. So then I think what I would do is um, if I'm hearing that the direction in the board in general wants to go is to remove the temperature checks, I would send you that language so you could see what it would look like to put it in the plan. And I would send it to PDE because every time we update our plan, I send it to PDE. I would send it to them in advance. So um, when we approve the plan this evening, I'd recommend approving it with that change. I'll send it to you though in advance before um, you know we would we would send it to get approved so you can see what that language would look like. Is there a, still a screen where they ask for uh, any positive? Uh, no, not a lot. Is it, it should, okay. No. Okay. It would be done at home, and we would communicate with parents that shift so that they're, you know, as clear as can be that the responsibility is as is at the home to be able to uh, accurately um, monitor and report. Weren't asking uh, screening questions, right? They were literally just taking the temperature. They weren't asking if you've had off or a loss of like none of that. At times, like if a kid didn't look right, you know, they kind of get to know the kids when they come in. So I think at times there could have been some of that, but to the largest extent, no, not every child was filling out a questionnaire or things like that you've seen other places. Okay. Thank you. So I just wanted to, to say to the board, I'm a little bit conflicted with the uh, Act 80 days. Uh, on the one hand, I want the year to end as fast as it can. But on the other hand, you know, here are two more days that we're not going to have uh, teaching the kids. And you know, hearing about these ideas for summer school and, and 
how much uh, behind these folks are. And uh, there, there are thoughts, you know, of, of public uh, or government funding to cover some, some schools so the kids can make up some of the time. So uh, I'm just a little conflicted about that. And, uh, you know, I know we're not voting or anything, but I wanted to voice my opinion that I'm just not sure. It seems like any time we have to teach the kids, we should, and especially as things are getting better. Uh, so, uh, Rabbi, I, I know where you're going from, but. I think if you go back the last 15 years and ask everybody that the teachers and everybody, and they're going to tell you those two extra days, Monday and Tuesday, you're not going to get any education done anyways. Yeah, you know, like I, I agree yeah. with that. You know, those last two days, yeah. everyone has checked out, which is why I think we were remiss at not trying to do some cyber education the two days that we called off. I mean, I respect the decision you made, Dr. Aiken, it was your decision to make. I think the opportunity missed there was even if we got half an hour out of work, um, get the frustration that I know a lot of our parents have gone through with the education at home. We at least missed that half an hour, whatever the time was. Because I think you're right. When you have those wraparound days in June, boy, oh boy, there's a lot of movies going on and a lot of whole lot of nothing yeah. other than checking a box. And it's an opportunity lost right now. It's something you learn to move forward from, right? And it's always easy in hindsight. I think that's where we missed the boat a little bit. That if we're worried about the children, the development, and where they're at educationally, uh, you know, this certainly doesn't help that by pulling the Act 80 days. They're not going to be in school those days. I'd just like to say, as a former teacher, the end, those two days are really down days for kids. And if somebody can come up with some super great idea on how to keep the children's attention during those two days, uh, I think any classroom teacher would totally appreciate that. Um, I just think the way we're handling is the proper way. We did design the calendar next year to do that, though. You know, with all the snow days at the end of the year in June. So I, I, I'm puzzled. Okay, um, thank you. That's the Okay, very good. On to personnel. Uh, we have items A through H. There are no new hires and there are no requirements. So I would like a motion on item nine for items A through H. Second. Okay, uh, any discussion? on items A through H. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion passes. Uh, item 10, the treasurer's report. Uh, motion to approve item A. Statement for February 21st. Item A, the for Second. Any discussion on the treasurer's report, item A? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Item passes. Motion for item D, and item D, general elementary project. Second. Second. Any discussion on any of those items? Uh, one question on item D. All the punch list items printed. They are, yep. yep. We were we were actually just going back and forth over the cost of a change order for a while. So what we gotta work out. Okay. And Pat, did you say B, C, and D? C and D. D and D. D and D. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay, board committee reports. Business ops. So we had a meeting on February 25th. Um, five main agenda items. We talked through the update from CRA, which essentially was what we saw earlier today. We discussed the student memorial and where that'll be placed came to a consensus that it'll be back 
near the cafeteria entrance to the school. Um, we'll get visualizations of that up at one of the future meetings, but a uh, good, good place and a good way to, to more moralize a lot of the past students. Uh, we're in through Brian's light version of the budget presentation for next year. And Brian, are we going to go through the presentation again on the Alio, or are we just going to go through with the recommendation? We hadn't, we hadn't planned to okay. go through it again. Oh, I'm yeah. glad to answer any questions. Yeah. So the attachments are in the agenda if you looked at it in advance. Um, but the committee does recommend the approval of the purchase of the new Al Alio administrative software system for um, human resources. And I guess at this point, I'll look for someone, to, I'll make a motion that we make the purchase as outlined for the purchase of the Widenhammer Systems Alio Suite of Financial Management and Human Resources and the Alio Content Management Software and related software agreements. Total one year cost of $175,346, which includes the year one maintenance subscription of $57,145. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. That makes a lot of people quite happy and it's a huge upgrade. <laughs> Um, the last thing we discussed at the, the business ops meeting was a brief overview of the Manhattan Borough Stream Restoration Project. And for those of you who haven't seen it, it is out there. You can find the pictures, really cool concepts as they redo the bridge over the creek and put in pathways and walkways actually create some seating areas, mostly uh, for informational purposes as far as the district is concerned. Although um, it will for a while take out the crossing between Middle school and the high school when that happens this summer, I believe, Brian. Uh, actually, that's looking to start around April 15th. So, yeah, yeah it's, uh, so that that uh, that bridge will be closed uh, to pedestrians. That's a little bit of a shuttle yeah. system around for students that come across there. Also, to note that outdoor classroom that's there too. Yeah, so one of the additions, if you didn't attend and have looked at it, there's going to be a Outdoor seating slash classroom area in the whole presentation. So really, really nice upgrades. What's the estimated time frame? Uh, that one, well, the bridge will probably be closed uh, through September, maybe October. And so it's hard to say when they finish that area. When the contractor says it's clear to open up, uh, we just felt it was better and safer for our students to close it, close it down rather than trying to open it up. Uh, I would think probably by the fall. Shuttle takes the track students from the middle over to the high school and the high school baseball over to the fields. We hope. Okay. We hope. Anything else, Mr. Need? No, that concludes the report. Thank you, Mr. Need. Academic committee, Dr. Frick. Yeah. Uh, Brian, if you could share the PowerPoint, great. While Brian's getting that set up, just FYI, the next uh, meeting for the academic committee is April 29th, uh, 2021, and it will be via Zoom at 6 p.m. All right, I just wanted to uh, cover a little bit. Did you get the most recent version of that, Brian? That's, uh, if, that, if not, that's okay. Um, I, I think it has everything, we'll just forge ahead. So uh, just a little bit about the Technology Student Association. Amongst the many things that our student reps uh, cover, and they cover a lot of ground, um, TSA kind of uh, is not mentioned and it's no fault of anybody's. It's just, I, I, I think it's an important organization that needs uh, to uh, be brought forward to the board and public because it does uh, include a lot of STEM uh, focus in what it does. So, uh, and it really emphasizes creativity and innovation in students. So. With that, if you could advance the slide. Yep. 
Yeah, this is this is a uh, an old one, Brian. Is there any way I can share my screen? Do I have that capability? One here is a technology there, Dr. Yeah. Uh, did John say okay? You're good to go. Sorry about that, Dr. Frick. Oh, no problem. No problem. All right. Can everybody see that? All right, moving on. Sorry about that. Uh, this year's regional competition was held on February 27th at CV um, and uh, it was held virtually. Mannheim Central typically has a large cohort of students who attend, but this year due to COVID and the logistics surrounding that, they had uh, less of a show. Um, four of our students placed in, in their events one of our students qualified for state competition and that's gonna take place from April 14th through the 16th. And then a live stream ceremony will occur on the 17th. Uh, it's really a, a excellent time. Uh, I'll be judging at the state level um, a, as a judge. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what students from a state perspective bring to the table. Our very own Ben Holsinger uh, placed in computer aided design or CAD engineering. Um, and so he's got a very interesting task ahead of him. He's going to have to uh, uh, solve an engineering problem in a five hour period using uh, the 3D CAD programs at the high school. So, in essence, he'll be given a task and then Within that time frame, he'll have to solve it and present his solution. So, um, so they really put students to the test with their creativity, ingenuity, and innovative skills. So, um, we really um, wish Ben good luck on that endeavor and uh, hope that he's successful in uh, placing at the state level. And with that, I just want to thank the students who are involved, also. Certainly the tech ed department, the teachers, Mr. Pratt, who's the TSA advisor, Mr. Bechtel, and Mr. Ekman, who really nurture the students and support them in their projects and endeavors. And definitely the high school administration for uh, supporting TSA and uh, all its activities. So uh, with that, certainly if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, talk to Mr. Pratt. He's really uh, open to discussing TSA to anyone who is interested and wants to hear more. So, and that, Thank you, that ends my report. <laughs> no report. Mr. Clare, activities committee. No report, no meeting. Okay, thank you. General action items. Item A, I have a motion for the approval of the Mannheim Central School District Health and Safety Plan changes for the 2020 and 2021 school year. So then seconded, any discussion? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion passes. Item B, approval of the Mannheim Central School District athletic health and safety plan changes for the 2020-21 school year. So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on item B? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Let's put item C and D together. Can I have a motion for item C and D? Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on either item C or D? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. 
Item E, approval of the agreement with Lancaster County Academy to secure two additional Mannheim Central student placements for the 2021-22 school year at a cost of $3,422. So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? A little discussion on that. Uh, we have 10 slots, and our 10 slots have been uh, full uh, all year. Uh, and uh, we had uh, we have a bunch of other students that were waiting, uh, so if we're, we we were able to pick up two slots and we have to pay for one. So it's a great uh, to help to the two students that are going to go. We had to do it, um, and I didn't think there would be a problem. And Dr. Aiken didn't think there'd be a problem. The super program. Very good. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor of item E, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'd like to put items F and G together. Can I have a motion for items F and G? Second. Second. Thank you. I'm moving second. Then any discussion? I have a question about item. F and G, correct? F and G, yes, ma'am. Put that agreement together. Why the Meadows in Center Hall, Pennsylvania? I can speak to F. Um, F is just an outstanding agreement we've had for years. We haven't used it probably in the last five or six years. It's just an opportunity for if kids need service. It's a place that's willing to give us service. Um, it's not been something we've used. Um, so why historically we've had this agreement as an option for our kids who might need that type of treatment. We're paying $67 a day for something we haven't used in five years. This is only if we would need it. As needed. If it's used. If needed. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> like, so it's sort of just it's a no, security no, blanket, so to, say, so to speak, in case we would need, if in case we would need services. We just haven't happened to need their services in the last couple of years. We like to have it available and not have to wait for an agreement to be passed in case we would have a student in need. So we can't find any, like, we can't make an agreement with a, a local place, so that it's way it's just in addition to all of the other agreements we have with places it, it all around. It's, an option. it's just an option. Okay. Okay. Thank you. It's not our only option. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor of items F and G, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. Item H, approval of the appointment of Stacy Litter to the Lancaster Lebanon IU 13 board for a term of three years in June 2024. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. Items I and J. Can I have a motion for items I and J, please? So moved. Moved and second. Any discussion on either item I or J? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. Uh, board reports. Ms. Ritter, are you 13? I'd just like to give a shout out to Brian Barnhart and the excellent job that they're doing there of getting their staff and other people in the district in the districts that they serve, sorry, vaccinated, so they can get back to the classrooms with their kiddos and hopefully since they serve a high risk population as well. And that close interaction with the children, um, fantastic. They did an excellent job with the, with the shots and stuff and it was well done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you for serving. Uh, Mr. Bushy, the CTC. Uh, we had we had one short meeting, mm -hmm. like the world's quickest meeting. It was just some house general housekeeping stuff, some schedules and stuff like that. And then we have another we meeting this Thursday, and I'll look forward to after that. Thank you, Mr. Bushy. Uh, PSBA, Mr. Clare. Uh, yes, yeah, so as they stated, uh, things are happening sometimes twice in one day. Uh, I, I suggest if you would read um, and 
they they just sent out a survey and I believe they sent it out to every school board member. And I hope every school board member filled it out because in there, it will tell you whether or not you need to do the uh, testing for a school board member. Um, so uh, I'll try to keep you updated on all that, but uh, so much is happening so fast. Okay, thank you for that report. And you're also on to the Academy, Lancaster Academy. All right, Lancaster County Academy is unbelievable what we're going through. Uh, it's, uh, our new director who has just brought new life to the Academy with new ideas, new students. Uh, we have more students attending the Academy this year from our symposium than uh, ever before. Um, I think it's just a, a great, uh, a great idea, and we're going to keep moving forward on. Thank you for that report as well. Okay, the informational items there on enrollment and our next meeting is. Uh, there it is, thank you. April 12th, right here in the district, 6.30. Are there any board comments as we, before we adjourn? Yeah. I'm sorry, I lost thought. I do have one, uh, representing the uh, Ma'am Central Alumni Association as well as the Madam Central Hall of Fame. Uh, several months ago, we lost a key member of our, our board's uh, co-founder. Uh, she taught art uh, for, I think, 28 years here. Besides graduating, uh, B. Myers Kreiner passed away. Uh, the Alumni Association will be naming a scholarship in her name. It'll be a, uh, an art scholarship, which we haven't worked out yet. It's the first scholarship that's going to be offered to art students, uh, which we're real happy. And by some generous contributions, we will be able to, when we have this set up, we will be able to give a minimum of $1,000 a year. Ever. Great. Good to hear. I have one on that. <laughs> no, I'm not a board member. I found the rate. So it, uh, the moderate range is 10 to 100 cases. That's what moderate is. We're at 124. So about 24 cases away. Okay. Good to know. Thank you. Can I give a shout out to the um, senior class celebration committee? Yeah, that was a neat idea with Clipper Stadium. <laughs> yeah. So I, and I would like to thank the, um, Doing restaurant week this week, as Cassie Borey said. So uh, today was tropical smoothie. Tomorrow is Suns, and I believe Wednesday is Twin Kiss. Yeah, I hope that Twin Kiss connection there. Thursday, <laughs> Thursday is Hearth and Hollow, and then I believe Friday is Mix. I'm sorry if I got that. Are, are we informed of this? I I, did I miss the memo. It's, I've, I'm on the mom's. Okay, because I certainly eat out. <laughs> Well, and the other thing is, if you check with the shack, uh, when they open up, they every Wednesday, I think it is Wednesday, and they will give you anybody that goes, I think you get 10%, but if you take the certificate, you get 15%. Um, and it, that's a, a lot of people used that last year. Well, Businesses, I believe, are giving a percentage right. back. Right. Uh, what you yeah. Yeah. fundraising yeah. for the. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, it's good, but I, uh, yeah, I would have gone to Tropical Smoothie. All this week. Thanks. Yeah. And um, in all seriousness, uh, were you involved in that scholarship program that was mentioned early on by the students? Okay. Yeah, should they mention going to Twin Kiss and you get certain prizes or something? Uh, we, we, we do a, a ton. For, yeah. for all for for all over. I, so I don't really know every okay. single thing that gets involved. I think if they applied for scholarships, they got a hamburger or something. Sounds like if they yeah. if they said it, it sounds like something. Yeah. Okay. Good. You got a shot. You got a Krispy Kreme donut. <laughs> yes. Okay. 
Motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Second. Who's in second? It. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion passes. The meeting. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Rob. Okay, no problem.